episode 100. Mm. I never thought we would get here. We're announcing our retirement. This is it. We hit 100 and we're done. <laughs> episode 100. We're going to have a smorgasbord of Just sorts. a smattering. Celebration. Yes. It's going to be great. People seem to like the different topics and, and finding something that interests them. So to celebrate our 100th episode, Will and I are going to go through a list of some common questions, recent common questions on, uh, it's actually pretty interesting. There's a website called Quora. 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 And uh, yeah, people ask questions about any, tons of topics. Anything. So we're going to go There's some good ones. <laughs> There's topics. some good questions and some questions where you're like, damn, how did you make it this far? Mm, how are you alive? <laughs> so... Oh, shit. And, of course, the ones that we, we feel confident answering. Some stuff is just all over the place. Some stuff is wild, and I can't even believe some people, like, hit a point where they have to ask that question. Mm -hmm. Let's just do it, man. Let's dig in. Let's give the people what they want. I lost my... I got to find where I was. You lost your mind. These thumbs, man. Nah, Gary, he's getting old. Now you know what it is. Is that a Blackberry you're using? What is what is that? <laughs> they're they're worn out from yard work. Uh, you watching Barry do your your yard work? Yeah. <laughs> Supervising. <laughs> oh man. Oh. Mm. I don't mind yard work, man. I say that because I don't really have to do it. I got my sprinkler coming. Your one sprinkler. Mm -hmm. What kind is it? Like the. I don't know, the long time where it just does like a, a wave that goes no, up and over. About, what is uh, it? It's like a circular one. Does it spin? Yeah. I don't know. It's had good reviews. <laughs> just trust everybody else. All right. So here we go. All I, right. Let it rip. What, the first one was a good one. Was what are some daily habits that can improve your posture? Hmm. That's a good, I mean, there's, there's a lot of good ones and they're like the basics and stuff we talk about a lot, but let's talk about what probably destroys your posture yeah. and why someone would have this pain point. Right. So yeah, a lot of times people are starting to have this like forward neck posture and hunched over and rounded shoulders. When you do that, now your weight is shifted forward. Your hips have to compensate. Your knees have to compensate and it's painful and it yeah, doesn't it look great. Right. So for one, our default posture now is yeah, that computer, cell phone, hunched mm -hmm. forward posture. So we have to counterbalance that. Another, which we talked about, go back to a fairly recent episode on feet and shoes. Yep. If you have, you know, heel elevation, that's dumping. That you, rocks you forward. Yeah, if you kept your posture straight, you'd be leaning forward, so you have to compensate or you fall over, which then normally means like jutting your, your hips forward or maybe rounding, you know, just you end up with yeah, a funky. you compensate, you know, you kind of have to zigzag. Um, and a lot of those, we're not going to be able to completely eliminate, right? No. Especially like cell phone and yeah, all like that. how many people work at computers and work from home or maybe sit all day? Like it's not like well, I mean, you can quit your job and do something else, but realistically, how do you work around that? Mm -hmm. I guess is the the biggest question. Um, I mean, a big one: strength training. Just regular strength training doesn't have to be anything crazy, but you know, making sure you're you know, training everything equally or maybe even a little more, a little more back work, but we can even just say a nice equal training split. Um, you know, maybe three days a week, what we would normally recommend for most people and getting stronger. And when all the muscles of your back are a little bit stronger, you know, that, that pull forward, you have something kind of fighting against it and you're spending time in those positions of, you know, a nice upright position, getting your shoulder blades to move and work. Um, instead of just kind of spending your time in that static head forward, shoulders forward position for, we'll say, eight hours a day. Yeah. And, you know, you don't have to do that daily per se. No. So, but it's still, yeah, it should be like a weekly consistent habit. Mm -hmm. So strength training. And then another is the shoes you're wearing. Yeah. So, yeah, if you wear more flat, barefoot type shoes, that's going to help your posture. I saw on Inyasa's reviews, the Instagram page, she mm -hmm. showed her like 10 year and three year, like before and after of her posture. Yeah. From switching her shoes. Obviously, it's not going to get a result by just 
one day or one week. No, but over time, man, that's a big difference maker. Yeah, so strength training, type of shoes you're wearing. Mm -hmm. Um, Another is, can be like your, you want to be careful saying your awareness because you don't want to have to think about squeezing your shoulder. Yeah, because I don't think that's actually super helpful to. It It should come natural. But, and there's no like perfect posture you have at all, all moments in time. No, like posture is actually kind of a, a, a very fluid, mm-hmm. you know, different postures for different situations. And I would think posture should be the ability to put yourself, your body in the right position for the situation, right? That it calls for. So, you know, for most people, you know, standing up straight and keeping everything aligned is, you know, where you should be when you're walking and whatnot, um, but you shouldn't, like if you're laying on your side, you don't need to have your shoulder blades pulled back or you know anything like that, nice and rigid, because that's kind of ridiculous. But you should have the ability to be in that position or you know be in a more aligned position more of the time. Yeah, and then another two is gonna be your diet because that's gonna relate to your body composition, mm-hmm. which is then also gonna relate to your posture. Yes. So same thing as your shoes though in your alignment off. If you're carrying a bunch of excess adipose body fat, so yeah. stomach fat. It pulls you forward. It pulls you forward, right? Yeah. So then you have to compensate. Uh, so that's really the, the main thing is, it's gonna be kind of the general habits you should have anyways, yeah. right? Exercise, strength train, good nutrition to, to attain and maintain a good body composition, um, flat shoes. Yeah, I like, you know, daily, like we'll call it daily movement, but just like going for some walks. It could be short yeah. walks through the day if you find yourself um, as somebody who sits a lot during the day, you know, take a, you know, set a timer for every, I don't know, X amount of time and just go for a 10 minute walk or whatever you can muster. But some regular movement through the day can be a very big help or even, if you have to front load it, go for an out, you know, 30 minute walk in the morning or an hour or whatever you have available, um, can really lend itself well to, to that. Mm. Isn't it crazy how we end up the daily habits to improve your posture ends up being the same thing we always preach. Yeah. Exercise. Same walk, old, same old nutrition. I mean, that, there's only but so much you can do in a day too, right? That's going to be consistent and sustainable, but all those things. Yeah. And I think doing the, the basics is going to be more sustainable and more helpful than like trying to fit in a whole bunch of crap to help you, mm-hmm. which is just not realistic, you know? So I don't know. I'm a big fan of just yeah. doing those things. So here's one questions like these are always fun. What are the five most weight loss friendly foods on the planet? Right? <sighs> so, First, you want to start with, well, what's the principle of weight loss? It's ultimately you have to um, provide your body with less caloric intake, less calories than it needs to create a calorie deficit to then when you're in a calorie deficit, your body goes, oh, I need to um, use stored body fat to make up for this deficit. That's how we lose body fat. Now, simple, basic, there is tons of things that complicate, especially that calories out, right? And we talked about before. So a simple one we'll try to use that I think people will be able to conceptualize is say your diet. So protein foods have a thir- roughly a 30% thermic effect. Meaning if say you ate 100 calories of a protein food, 30% of those calories are burned just to process, digest that, those, that food. Right, so then it's actually like you consumed seventy calories. Yeah, a hundred calories of a fat and carb, so of a you know cinnamon bun, mm-hmm. which is mostly fat and carbs, is going to basically be a hundred calories. Yeah, right. So yeah, now the let's thermic just, effect of those is very. So let's say you low. had a thousand cal, you consumed a thousand calories of protein versus a thousand calories of cinnamon bun. Um, now you're talking. You're, it's going to be like you consumed 700 calories versus 1,000. That's a Which, 300 calorie difference. That's a big difference. difference for people. So that's where it's just not as straightforward and simple as calories in, calories out, right? The type of foods do matter in that effect. Mm-hmm. The other effects are also going to be things like satiety signals to your brain, right? Well, the say we're, say the protein foods like 
skinless, boneless chicken breast. So pure protein. <laughs> it's also not. It's going to sense better satiety signals to your brain. Mm-hmm. It's not going to be the most delicious thing in the world. Yeah, it's not super palatable like a lot of other things are. To which is a good thing. To, oh my gosh, I got to have more and more. Whereas that cinnamon bun, you're like, oh man, this is so good. I'm going to keep. Yeah, even if you feel slightly sick after eating a cinnamon mm-hmm. bun, your brain's like, yeah, let's get some more of this. It's also been. It also has like spices and seasonings and maybe even like artificial colorings to make oh, it yeah. more appealing, right? So all this stuff's combining to make it that experience hyper palatable, right? And eat more. So that's where, you know, when we start talking about what are the five best foods on weight loss friendly foods on the planet, well, it's not that simple. It's going to come down to a lot of factors and you could technically do it with any food. Yeah, any food. Um, but remember, weight loss isn't the same as just fat loss. No. Nope. You know? um, that's another factor. But in general, so we'll kind of take this, the five best weight loss friendly foods on the planet. Well, ultimately, it's going to be foods that control your satiety. I think that's they're going to be honestly a, the biggest factor. They're going to be uh, whole foods, natural foods, um, protein based. Because mm-hmm. say you're you're just picking, you know, five but, foods, right? Like you're gonna you have to have protein. Like you can't live without certain amino nah. acids. So, um, but in general, just think of protein and then fiber f- foods. Because fiber is also going to be satiating. Mm-hmm. It's also going to be a food where oh yeah, you can consume X amount of this fiber, but then what actually kind of becomes usable calories in your body it's, is way low. less. Yeah. So again, it's the same thing with the protein in that the thermic effect of protein and fiber is, really cuts down on the actual net calories you get out of it. Which is going to help you feel more full and satiated on less yes. total calories. So, so yeah. and, uh, and not to use some like wild food, you know, because it's not going to matter. There is no superfoods. No. But for most normal stuff that you can get at the grocery store, it's going to come down like lean proteins and like high fiber, um, like berries mm-hmm. and veggies, things like that are going to be most helpful Absolutely. to most people when, as far as picking foods that are going to help with weight loss. Mm-hmm. Um, now saying that I would almost even keep one of those foods as something that you do really enjoy because as we've seen with studies and re- we're working with clients and our own lives, Going to try to go 100% Spartan and avoid everything. That doesn't work either. doesn't work long-term either. So it's, hey, including some of those things that you really enjoy, but being able to manage them, um, you know, in in the overall scheme. Yeah. So I feel like that was a question that wasn't going to have the answer that the person wanted, no matter what. And here's the thing. It's going to look different for everyone. Yes. The foods that serve me for that may be a little different than yours, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. you know, for me, say it could be lean ground beef, um, strawberries or berries, um, you know, oats, whatever, right? Yeah. For someone else, it could be um, a different grain or no grains at all. Chicken and, breast. And a different mead and a different fruit. Yeah. So, but again, it's typically is going to be whole, whole foods, right? But then within that, don't feel like you, oh, like... There's a list that says uh, pomegranates are like the super the food. most weight loss friendly food on the planet. And then it's like you hate pomegranates. I mean, let's be real. Yeah, are pomegranates are even like, good? Or, no. No. And then are they even <laughs> practical? No. no. Have you ever tried to eat a pomegranate? You got to like. Bro, it's the messiest. Yeah. And just like most tedious process is worse than picking crabs. And I love crabs. But like trying to get the little things out mm-hmm. of a pomegranate. I know it's just the example, but it set me yeah. off. So it's just not a realistic aerials, food to eat. Is that what they're called? What are they called? I think they're called like the aerials or something like that. I thought you said areolas. <laughs> it's like, damn, that's not it. Um, that so not yeah, it. that's another factor too, right? Is the food even um, sustainable for you to prepare, to mm-hmm. food to even obtain? Yeah. Um, so always think about, hey, you have the chance to define your best weight loss friendly foods. And it's going to be context dependent. Mm-hmm. But again, start with lean proteins and fiber. Let's see. Hit me with another one. Man, I really missed a good category. I backed out and now it's just showing me. You need to learn how to use your screenshot function, man. 
Screenshot, screenshot, screenshot. <laughs> Some of these. How do I lose weight in a week, healthy or unhealthy? <laughs> Just start cutting stuff off, man. I'm Just like, what do you? Where do you have to be in a week? So okay. healthy or unhealthy? They didn't <laughs> care, man. Um. <laughs> Yeah, right. So obviously you, you should probably shouldn't wait it. You're not gonna have anything major happen. Nah. You could lose a little water weight in a week. That's about um, it. Um and here's the other thing too that's tough. This is the similar someone asked had asked before about the fr- I forget what the where they like freeze your fat off. Mm-hmm. You yeah. Know? That cryo like surgery stuff. type thing. And the thing is the more fat you have to lose, the less you're gonna notice from like three pounds of fat loss yeah the leaner you are the more like every half pound of fat loss is like makes drastic very noticeable noticeable differences right so with that like freeze your fat off stuff it's really only beneficial when you're actually kind of already lean and maybe there's like whatever trouble yeah. spot or you're trying to get that last bit because i think it actually does work work yeah but you know they you're not burn. losing 40 pounds of they, fat man there's no way so much at once yeah and it's expensive yeah and if you haven't look if you you've established habits of you're struggling with to manage your weight and you burn off three pounds for 800 dollars or whatever and then you gain it back because you didn't change your back. eating yeah because you, you might actually be, be be worse off after that mm-hmm. so yeah don't do that don't burn your fat off so yeah if you like need to lose weight within a week for whatever reason healthy or unhealthy the reality is you need to make, make better choices. <laughs> and like we said before, there's a difference in losing weight and losing fat. Yes. Like you can just cut out your water, cut out your sodium, and lose, cut out your carbs in a week, and you're going to drop... And you'll drop water. Four to six pounds of like water weight, stored glycogen, mm-hmm. things like this, but it's not actual body fat. That's that low-carb effect when people get that drop when they yeah. switch to keto or low-carb, and they're like, I dropped seven pounds my first week. That was your body just getting rid of a bunch of water and glycogen because it's not being replenished. Yeah. So, and just so you know, like, if you know me, you know I'm always on the run, up early and home late. So having a three-hour morning routine isn't really in the cards for me. What is in the cards is AG1. It's a fast way to get vitamins and minerals I need to perform. I first gave AG1 a try because it was, I wanted a single solution that helps support my entire body by filling in nutrient gaps and simplifying my morning routine. Since drinking AG1 daily, I've always felt strong and energized and ready to attack the day. Not only does AG1 deliver my daily dose of vitamins, minerals, pre- and probiotics, and more, it's a powerful, healthy habit that's also powerfully simple. It's one scoop, mixed in water, once a day, and every day. I know that AG1 is giving my body high-quality nutrition. Every batch of AG1 goes through a rigorous testing process so you know that it's safe. And AG1 ingredients are sourced for absorption, potency, and nutrition density. AG1 is a supplement that I trust to provide the support my body needs daily, and that's why I'm excited to welcome them as a new partner. Here is your chance to start every day this season with a gift to yourself. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3K2 and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase exclusively at drinkag1.com slash proven grit. That's drinkag1.com slash proven grit. Check it out. If you know me, you know I'm always on the run up early and home late. So having a three hour morning routine isn't really in the cards for me. What is in the cards is AG1. It's a fast way to get vitamins and minerals I need to perform. I first gave AG1 a try because it was, I wanted a single solution that helps support my entire body by filling in nutrient gaps and simplifying my morning routine. Since drinking AG1 daily, I've always felt strong and energized and ready to attack the day. Not only does AG1 deliver my daily dose of vitamins, minerals, pre- and probiotics, and more, it's a powerful, healthy habit that's also powerfully simple. It's one scoop, mixed in water, once a day, and every day. I know that AG1 is giving my body high-quality nutrition. Every batch of AG1 goes through a rigorous testing process, so you know that it's safe. And AG1 ingredients are sourced for absorption, potency, and nutrition density. AG1 is a supplement that I trust to provide the support my body needs daily, and that's why I'm excited to welcome them as a new partner. 
Here is your chance to start every day this season with a gift to yourself. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3K2 and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase exclusively at drinkag1.com slash proven grit. That's drinkag1.com slash proven grit. Check it out. Those those are bad. Like you want water and glycogen, yeah, and sodium in your muscles and in your body. Yeah, like it helps, they help you perform well. They yeah, it helps help it you, work. you you know, it's a good thing. So when you when we say that, like, you may think, oh well, yeah, that that sounds nice. I don't want that stuff. No, you do. That's why your body has it. Because when you're healthy and eating sufficiently and consuming things, like that's the natural process. Yeah, it stores water and glycogen and sodium and potassium. In mm-hmm. your muscles, all that good stuff, and things like that. So you're telling me I'm holding salt water. So, yeah, it's just basically Gatorade, though. A little salt, a little sugar. What exercises can I do to get rid of big stomach? So this is a common question, right? Like spot people want to spot reduce. I want to get rid of this. Always. And the reality is, you can't spot reduce. Nah, you can't do exercises for your stomach. To get rid of your stomach. Or like you can't do exercise. The bat wings. Bat wing, your upper arm. That's a common one. How do I get rid of these? And then people start, you know, flicking their arms around. <laughs> you need to just train your whole body, dial in nutrition, and let it run its process. And people actually genetically are going to have a different, a little bit different order that they may lose. Yeah, and body. our fat storage is different person to person. And that's just, unfortunately, the hand you're dealt. And you can't change that at all. So you just have to deal with it. And for some people, they're very lucky that maybe they store their weight. You know, maybe women store their weight on their hips and legs, which is, um, you know, probably a little bit um, easier to deal with mentally. And then some people store it more in their stomach and all of that. But that's largely out of your control. So just, you know, eat the right amount of food in order to lose weight everywhere and eventually and then exercise, that spot. Exercise not to... Get rid of your stomach. Exercise to be strong. Yeah, and be able. Be and capable. Because um, it's good for you. It's good for your heart. It's yeah. good for your bones. Like, exercise for those reasons. When is the best time of day to work out? So, this is simple. The time you're going to do... Whenever you can get to the gym. Whenever you can do it, right? <laughs> and then we'll take it a step further and say, ideally, whenever you can be most consistent with... Yes. Um, that's going to be the best time to work out. You know, again, there is some nuanced stuff. And if you're at training on an elite level, yeah, like that matters. Say you're a professional power lifter. You're probably not going to want to be squatting and deadlifting max weights at 5 a.m. 45 minutes after you woke up. Yeah, because your body's just not quite yeah. as ready your for, for that. Your spinal fluid hasn't settled and mm-hmm. central nervous system and factors like that. But for most people, if that's the only time you can train, do it. Do it and do what you can, and you're probably not a professional power lifter and have to worry about those things. So the best time to train to work out is when, when you, you can get will there. actually do it consistently. Yes. Mm-hmm. Let's see here. Mm. So, I mean, this is a, what are effective and simple ways to tighten up my loose abdomen now that I have lost weight. So, may depend on your age. If you're younger, it's gonna your skin's gonna have more elasticity and so tighten up. It bounces back, so to speak, um, a little quicker. But if you've lost a lot of weight and have a lot of excess skin, like surgery is gonna be. Really yes, sometimes that's the only option. The main thing. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Surgery. Dude, surgery scares me. Does it freak you out? Uh, yeah, I've never had it. And I don't think you, I've had my wisdom teeth out, and that's it. Someone's you're cutting yourself open. I just I don't know, man. Like people that have had multiple surgeries, I just can't do it. Or you hear like somebody like hey, uh, God, what's the dude um, from the Redskins you that broke the, his shin? The football team. Oh, sorry, the Washington football team. Alex Smith. Yeah, dude. Uh, how many surgeries did he have? Like 20-something surgeries or something? Like, holy shit. That, I don't know. I can't handle it. I don't want to be cut open once. 
these questions, man. They're good, I'm trying, right? I'm trying to find. I'm trying to find good ones. An actual good question. Uh, I, could, I could help the cause, man. Mm. Another, another stomach one. Everyone wants that quick fix, man. Just like I want my grass to be green. Yeah. Or I just want grass. You just want grass. Like tomorrow. Nah. Best I can do is March. That's a that's a good thing when you don't you realize. Um, yeah, people just want that outcome, mm-hmm. but there's typically a process and there's, there's no quick process, fix. Man. And, um, let's see. I'm going to change categories here. Mm-hmm. You going to lawn care? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Strength and exercise. What's the best exercise to get rid of my stomach, my stomach fat? <laughs> oh, man. Everyone wants. Man, oh, man. All right. So. It better be a good one. How can I easily? It's always ease, man. How can I easily and rapidly increase my cardiovascular endurance? Well. Cardiovascular endurance, it, there's no non-disc, like, way that's not going to avoid discomfort. Like doing work? Yeah. You know, I think that's the big mistake is people want everything to be easy, right? And just happen. So, now an e- efficient way to increase your cardiovascular endurance is to train your e- aerobic system, which is when your heart rate's typically between, like, for most people, like, one... 10 and 140 Mm -hmm. Um, because when you get higher and something becomes anaerobic Anaerobic. um, then your body has to use carbs and it's a different energy system and and all of this too is kind of a scale like yeah it's not one or the other but the closer you get to higher intensity the more carbs you will have to use but yeah so to kind of start building that aerobic system which is the powerhouse the biggest part of your cardiovascular endurance uh you yeah you need to do activity for typically a little bit longer durations mm-hmm. like 20 to 90 minutes of in that like moderate lowish and keeping your heart rate in that zone range. where it's it's up but like you know you're not dying yeah so you could you know strap on a heart rate monitor to keep you honest and then you could do like a run walk run jog it's really going to depend then on your fitness levels yeah. if you're yeah cardiovascular endurance is poor you may just need to walk fast, right? Yeah. Um, some people may need to to run really fast to keep it there. Um, but as you get in better shape, yeah, that you'll have to up your intensity. Mm-hmm. Um, and but in general, like a lot of running and stuff is going to be so. It just depends on your circumstance, but um, it can be hard on your body, you know. So, like a bike is normally a good option. So hopping yeah. on a recumbent bike or a regular bike, again riding that. Um, then you also have where, you know, you can do little circuits. That's what we do at the gym. Mm-hmm. So piece together a bunch of different stuff for like a minute on, 30 seconds off, rolling through, focusing maybe on nasal breathing. That's so a good way to keep nose. it. You could go from like the rower to the skier to the air bike to a jump rope. To a sled walk. So that's going to be good so that it doesn't get boring. Mm-hmm. You know, just sitting on a bike for 60 minutes is going to be boring. Yeah. Um, unless you throw on the... Fit for Life Radio. Fit for Life Radio podcast. Then you should be good. We'll get you through it. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah, so it's typically something, some kind of modality of, of movement of movement for in that like moderate, lowish, moderate-ish mm-hmm. uh, heart rate range is going to be the best way to increase your cardiovascular. And the, and the thing with that is like it takes time for it to improve. Mm-hmm. You know, like it. You have to adapt over, you know, weeks and months, yeah. and it's good. not like you do one and your your heart's like, Ready I got go. this, let's yeah. do it. It just takes time to slowly get better and better and better, but that consistency is what's going to help you improve at it. Yeah. And the good thing with conditioning, though, is that it's not like muscle building or fat. It It is going to come kind of quick. It does you know? It does come quicker than, say, building muscle does. Absolutely. So, it, in, essentially, if you just start doing more conditioning, you're going to get there yeah know. um so yeah a couple days a week of that maybe you know don't feel like you got to hit seven days of yeah, hard cardio because that yeah you know may have may have two, negative effects on you like two sessions a week mm-hmm. to really depending on your your goals and what else you do 
A lot of context, man. Mm-hmm. A lot of it depends. We should just call our podcast that. It depends. Should I cut out all sugar? All of it. Never see it again. Ever. Um, the answer is no. Nah. First of all, you like having that mindset is like inherently like approaching it like all sugar is bad. Yeah, good and bad foods. Or that like that's going to be the answer to whatever I'm trying to do. Um, when like Will just said, there's nuance, right? Whether it's health or weight, lo- fat loss, um, it's not going to just be one thing. No. And we want it to, we want it to be because yeah. that's easy and simple, but it's not. And there's sugar in raspberries, right? Yeah, there's sugar in a lot of things. There's also man. lots of good, you know. Good things, and your body uses sugar for energy. Yeah, and that's right? fine. So you you need that to a certain point. Now, in the context of you, you say you eat a bunch of high calorie fast food, and then you also drink sodas, and then when people say cutting out sugar, that would then mean you're cutting out those sodas. Yeah. In that context, that's probably going to be helpful uh, because you're drinking for you know. <laughs> 24 ounces of, of soda sugar, or a right? liter. Like Let's say you're eating sugar in the form of berries. Well, you're getting fiber along with it and other nutrients. And you're going to fill up quicker. Yeah. So why would you, you know, so cutting, if those get cut out. Um, it might have an, a negative effect on, you know, you're not getting as full or mm-hmm. things like that. So, and you're more likely to rebound when you completely cut out an entire n- you know, nutrient essentially. And here's the other problem is now you start labeling some those foods as bad. And yeah. When the reality is they could help what you're trying to do. Uh, but now you've, you're fearful of it. Because then what happens if you, if you have it, then you're spiraling because you, you know, you messed up, you did something wrong. And that creates a really bad feedback loop of restricting, 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 and then binging and then restricting, restricting. But all the while you're beating yourself up. There's negative self-talk and, it's not very productive to, to approach it that way. You know, for every one person that has success with cutting out an entire food group, there's probably a hundred that are unsuccessful with, you know, completely eliminating something like that. So yeah, they don't look at it as good and bad. Just, you have to look into it more than just sugar is bad. That requires work though. It's like the cardio thing. Like you can't just get your heart fit in, in one day. Mm-hmm. So I don't know why this question's in here. Maybe because it's fitness and fitness and healthy food. So, why is the word dog in the hot dog? What does it mean? <laughs> I need, I don't know the answer. I need to know. The credit of naming hot dogs goes to a sports cartoonist for the New York Times, Tad Dorgon. What a name, Tad. <laughs> Tad Dorgon. Hot dogs were called Red Hots or Dash Hound sausages. For obvious reasons, right? Um, before it took its current elusive name. When vendors in the New York Polo Grounds in 1901 were screaming, they're red hot, get your Dachshund Hound sausages while they're red hot, the cartoonist observed and drew barking Dachshund sausages in a warm roll. He didn't know how to spell Dachshund, so he simply wrote hot dog. <laughs> 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 this cartoon oh, man. to become a sensation and the term hot dog was coined. Isn't it crazy? Like this dude didn't know how to spell and that's why we have hot dog. Mm-hmm. What a turn of events. That lazy what if we were sack of crap. This, this day. Hot Dosh, dachshunds? Dachshund sausages. Hey, let me get a dachshund sausage. Nah. We're too lazy for that. We would have come up with something else. Mm. Dachshund's a tough word though to spell. Could you imagine now? No one's spelling that. Nah. Nah, no way, man. Whenever like look, people see my dog, they're always like, is that a wiener dog? Yeah, it's a... No one's ever said, is that a dosh hound? Bro, wiener's way easier to say. Or hot dog. They'll say and hot it's dog. funnier. Wiener. wiener. They just want to say wiener. They do want to say... They want an excuse Seven to say wiener. Old. We all got it in us, that little middle schooler that giggles at the word wiener. <laughs> people... <laughs> Why does my dog eat so much off the floor? Because <laughs> it's a dog. <laughs> <laughs> like, maybe because they don't have thumbs and hands. Yeah. This is just the only way to do it. Hey, what if dogs had thumbs, it'd be a different world. I mean, the answer to that is because there's food on the floor. Yeah. If you put food on the table and let, they would eat that. They would, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Um, 
<laughs> reading through questions like that kind of depresses me a little bit. <laughs> oh, man. I guess it's like people have those thoughts in their head, and usually we breeze past them, but they decide, I'm going to ask the internet this because I really need to know. Mm-hmm. But you or I might just be like, nah, whatever, and then go on with our day. Mm-hmm. They need to know. All right, let's find one more here. One more, and we'll wrap it up. Give us a golden one. Let's see. Mm-hmm. I still can't get past that hot dog. Why do apples rot? <laughs> Why does everything die? That's just it, man. That's how. That's our our, our ooh, cycle. Ooh, here we go. Here we go. This one might end up just. This might take us the whole day. Let's another, do it. A whole episode. Let's do it. I can how do would, it. I can do it in ten seconds. How would you meal plan for a family of four on a food budget of forty dollars a week? Forty dollars a week. Forty dollars a week for four people. Four people. So that's two adults, two kids. That's not even. Is that below? Like. Food stamp levels, what they get? Th- Don't you get like I think it is dollars a day per person or something? But we'll just go with it. I so mean, forty dollars a week. Let's talk talk about our cheap staples. So that's that's not that's actually not that hard. That's kind of how I eat. So that's ten. But you're two people. Oh wait, no, 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 no. Ten. That's hard. Forty dollars a week. I'll yeah. get a day. No, nah, forty dollars a week, bro. Which means you get per person. So that's $10 a week per person. So, so you get a dollar 40 divided by 7 is 5 divided by do you 4 is 140 a day per person. Like I mean Yeah, that, that doesn't even make sense like there's no because yeah, so if you were getting let's see what There's no great way to do that. So if you were in poverty and had to get food stamps. <laughs> you, you see what I'm saying? Like, yeah. So, you, like, you wouldn't even be confronted with this. Um, Maybe they just slightly don't qualify. I don't know. It's just a complex I mean, question. Just, my, I guess my the first thing that comes to my mind is like beans. Yeah. No, I mean beans and rice. Bro, beans and rice is like your because so, there's a lot of nutrition mm-hmm. overall in, in beans and rice. And, I mean, you're getting complete protein. Yeah. Getting fiber, different nutrients, uh, enough cat. You gotta have enough calories too, mm-hmm. right? Like you start getting it. Like, hey, you gotta you gotta make it. Yeah. <laughs> um, beans and rice, that will work out. What I mean, what uh, as far as like protein sources, is anything cheap enough? Nah. Because even for four people, even a big thing of like calories. eggs is still like still gonna cost you. But yeah. I mean, that I mean, might a dozen be. eggs. Be, can be maybe you could get it for like 60 cents somewhere i because i swear i mean i've seen oh. big big old you know flats of eggs yeah so not maybe that me expensive. And I, got tired of beans or, I would just eat 12 eggs right for a dollar so there and then you got 40 cents left over yeah um so that would be a, a, a decently cheap one yeah um but still like that's yeah. really really hard to do but i would go yeah two two meals of beans and rice mm-hmm. like two big meals whatever would fit into that budget and, i mean you could batch cook that for the whole family mm-hmm. and the reality is like i mean that's been a it's been a staple for a long staple time. for a lot of cultures mm-hmm. for a long time um so you know it works yep uh yeah yeah that's but then now i'll be curious and you know what maybe we'll do another episode on this we need to figure out let us know if you know i know i've heard it before and i know it's around like four to six dollars a day per person but yeah what is like the allotment for, yeah, if you're if, you if you're on assistance like that, assistance, and then we and then put together. Um, that would be a fun episode to do. Yeah, like how would. do you eat when you're on X budget or you know? Mm-hmm. I think that could be pretty a pretty cool thing because that's one of the common complaints about that people say about well he- eating healthy is expensive, and in the grand scheme, it's not if you do it correctly. But if you're very restricted mm-hmm. with your the amount of money you can spend, then it does and start to pose a challenge. It depends too what's your definition of healthy. Exactly. So for some now, it could be only organic food and um, yeah. Or if you're loading up on like 12, 15 types of vegetables and fruit, well, that yeah. gets expensive. And there's better ways to do that. So that would be a fun one. Maybe next episode we can really come up with a really good plan on that. Yeah. We'll do that. Next week, 
we're going to go over well, balling on a budget. Yeah, within the next couple of weeks. Yeah, the next couple of weeks. So, boom. Hopefully, you enjoyed that. Found something useful. If anything, you know where hot dog, the, the name <laughs> yeah. came from. So Gosh, hound sausages. We're coming, we're coming out on top. Start that trend. I don't have that type we of energy. I don't our, have that type of energy. We should make our own sausage, and that's the name of the company. Dosh Hound Sausages. Let's do it. And a picture of my dog. And people are going to think they're made out of dogs. <laughs> 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 and you know neither of us can do that. We don't have the heart. All right. Well, there, there you go. 100th episode. We'll keep them coming. 100. We notice people like these different topics, Q&As. And sometimes it's hard... E- it's easy for us to overlook simple questions that yeah. we assume people know. Um, so that's why we did the thing today to see you had these common questions that we would try to outthink our, and think of more complex things. But a lot of people have these questions. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, a lot of people are stuck with like, how do I get rid of my belly fat? Mm-hmm. And it's up to us to educate, to help. All right. Enjoy the rest of your, your day. Appreciate you for listening. See ya. Bye. As always, thanks for listening, guys. If you want to learn more, check us out at CoastalFitnessVA.com or GaryDeagle.com. We'll see you next time.